Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to take a look at balancing out exposure issues inside a photo. What's often going to happen is you're going to have mixed lighting, whether you have some parts of your object in the shadows or parts of a photo that are too bright. And it's really hard to compensate for this because the human eye is a lot better than a photography lens, camera sensor, video camera, etc. Fortunately, Photoshop gives us some easy tools that we can use to fix these types of problems. Let's explore. Now, I've got two pictures open here that we're going to work with, and you could download both of these by visiting creativecow.net and just check out the podcast section where you'll find the downloads for each week's lesson. Let's take a look at our first one here. We've got a brick building against a bright blue sky, and we definitely fix a few things here. I'm going to do this non-destructively, and that's important. Whenever possible, you should work with an adjustment layer so you can go ahead and fix the image without actually permanently changing the pixels. We'll go ahead and click the Levels Adjustment here, and there we go. And what I'm going to do here is click Auto. Now, Auto looks at the picture and attempts to make the best fix. And it did okay, but only got so far. Let's go ahead here and take a look at each channel individually. Take a look at the red channel. We see that's pretty well balanced, but I want to open that up just a little bit. And let's do the same for green and blue. And we're just opening up that middle slider. That looks pretty good there. And I'm happy with that, but it's not quite right. We can go ahead back to Auto, and we see, okay, we're getting close, but it's just not going to get us there. So instead of doing this with one adjustment, we're going to do it with two adjustment layers. So let's go ahead and trash that. We can click the trash icon right here at the bottom of the adjustments panel to throw that one away and confirm that. And now we're going to do this in two passes. We'll do select color range and go ahead and click on the cloudy area. Hold down the shift key and we can drag through until we get a good area picked up. There we go. Uncheck the invert box and you see there we've got the sky perfectly selected. I'll go ahead and make that just a little fuzzier and say OK. Now, we've got a great selection on the sky. Let's go ahead and apply an adjustment layer for levels. And we'll go ahead and pull that in just a little bit. Notice how by pulling the black slider in, the blues get more intense. It increases the amount of the dark areas. And we can play with that middle slider there to affect the overall balance of the midtones. And that's looking pretty good. Quick toggle on the eyeball there will show you the before and after. And the sky looks a lot better. Now, we've gone through all that trouble to make a single selection. Let's go ahead and reverse that selection and get the rest of the image. I'll go ahead here, Command or Control click on the thumbnail to load it, and then say Select Inverse. We've now got the building selected. Go ahead and back one step in the Adjustments panel. Click on the Levels button there, and let's try Auto. And there we go. The building is lifted up out of the shadows and looks pretty good. Now, we could play with that middle slider there till we're happy with it. But all in all, that's looking pretty good. The only part of the image I'm not happy with is this exact edge here. We've got a little bit of information going on there, some bleeding of pixels. So let's click on the mask there and go to the masks panel. And we'll simply adjust the feather edge so it's a little softer. And we'll do that for both masks. There we go. That looks pretty good. What we're seeing there is a little bit of lights and cable on the very edge of the building, so that actually looks good now. Let's go ahead and zoom back. And that looks pretty good. We've fixed the image. Here's where we started. Here's where we ended up. All of that by actually just splitting it and doing two passes. That's really the secret here. A lot of people try to fix their image with one global adjustment. Rarely does that work. In the case of this image, we had to go ahead and make some compromises when we shot it. We shot right in the middle, which meant that the sky was a little too bright and the object was a little too dark. But afterwards, it was easy to go back in and make an adjustment on each area independently. Now, we've got a little bit of time left, so let's go ahead and take a look at one more command. It's the Equalize command, and what it does is it forces the blacks and whites in the image and uses more of the dynamic range. Now, this particular adjustment is not available as an adjustment layer, so you need to take a little safety step. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J, and we've got a copy. I'll now choose Image, Adjustments, Equalize. It's all the way there at the bottom. 
Now when you do that, it does a really hard push. It pushes the blacks towards the dark and the brights towards the bright. And chances are, the first time through, that's going to be a little too much. But that's okay. Because we have two copies of the image here, we could simply lower the opacity of the top copy. Let's just click on the opacity slider here and back that off a little bit. And there you go. You see by mixing the two images, we're getting a nice pop in the shadows and the bright areas, and that's worked out very well for us. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. My name's Rich Harrington. Be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where you can download the hands-on project files as well as check out some back episodes. And go ahead and head over to Focal Press where you can download the free chapter all about Photoshop CS4 from our book, Photoshop for Video. Thanks again.